Hello everyone. So this video is about paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. So this paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, so we write it as PNH. That is PNH, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Now, in order to explain paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, I need to give you a little introduction to a protein called, uh, sorry, it is a glycolipid which is called as GPI, glycophosphatidyl inositol. This glycophosphatidyl inositol is a glycolipid which is used as an anchor to bind a protein to a cell membrane. Now what all the proteins that use GPI linkage or GPI anchors to bind to plasma membrane and they are DAF, DAF, DAF is DK accelerating factor. This G DK accelerating factor is also referred as CD59, sorry CD55. DK accelerating factor is also referred as CD55 and there is a one more molecule which will which will belong to this category is CD59. So CD59 and DAF, these two molecules will use glycophosphatidyl inositol anchor to bind to plasma membrane. So especially in the red blood cells, these two will use GPI linkase in red blood cells. Now, what are the other proteins that we have which will bind to, which will use GPI to bind to plasma membrane and they are alkaline phosphatase, acetylcholinesterase, 5 prime nucleotidase. Now, how GPI is linked with the PNH that is paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria disease. Now, this GPI, it will be coded by a gene called pig A gene that is phosphatidyl inositol glycon A gene. This pig A gene is going to code for GPI. Now if there is any mutation in pig A gene means if there is a mutation in pig A gene then there will be a defective GPI that will be synthesized and this GP defective GPI they, it won't be binding to DAF and CD59 or the red blood cells because red blood cells they will hold on to DAF and CD59 over their plasma membrane using GPI linkase. Now this GPI linkase is coded by pig A gene. If there is a mutation in pig A gene now the GPI is mutated it's a defective protein defective link linked molecule it means DAF and CD59s are not found over red blood cell membrane. Now, it is important to understand what is the importance of DAF and CD59 over red blood cell membrane. Thereby, we can understand properly what, is, what are the signs and symptoms that we see in paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. The importance of DAF and CD59 over red blood cells is so they will they are the molecules which will make red blood cells as self okay so because our complement system they will recognize daf and cd59 present over red blood cells so complements complement system complement system it will recognize daf and c59 and cd59 as self and they don't destroy them. Any red blood cells which will express DAF and CD59 over their membrane complements will recognize them as self and they are not going to break them open. Whenever you, uh, whenever red blood cells do not contain, do not hold DAF and CD59 over their membrane complements will recognize them as non-self and then they are going to kill the red blood cell. They are going to break open the red blood cell leading to hemolysis. Okay. This is the basic principle of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Now in paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, as I told you already, so there will be a mutation in pig A gene. 
when there is a mutation in peak gazing i told you there will be defect to gpi anchor that is synthesized and because of that DAF and CD59s are not bound over red blood cells because red blood cells they use GPI to hold on to DAF and CD59 in the ab absence of GPI DAF and CD59s are not found over red blood cell it means complements will recognize these red blood cells as non self and they are going to destroy them okay now how frequently you see PNH cases so PNH is a very rare clonal hematopoietic stem cell disorder and we see one in 1 million united states population this is so rare now because of the absence of daf and cd59 red blood cells are hemolyzed which is, which is a complemented complement mediated intravascular hemolysis so hemolysis that you are going to see in pnh is complement mediated complement mediated intravascular hemolysis complement mediated intravascular hemolysis this is the kind of hemolysis that you are going to see in pnh now when the intravascular hemolysis is there so hemoglobin is breaking down into bilirubin so intravascular so hemoglobin is bound with haptoglobin haptoglobin is going to carry it to the liver and it is going to be converted to bilirubin so there will be increase in bilirubin in pnh increase in bilirubin so leading to jaundice patient will have jaundice now what else you are going to see in, here in pnh so because there is constant hemolysis going on because of the complement mediated hemolysis hemoglobin content in in this part these patients will be less go giving rise to anemia there will be anemia here and most importantly so paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria patients as the name says paroxysmal nocturnal nocturnal means night time hemoglobinuria means hemolysis is going on and hemoglobin is appearing in the urine so why that happens during night time need to understand during night time so because of the lowered respiratory rate when we are sleeping so that will retain the carbon dioxide and will decrease the ph physiological blood ph will be dropped a little bit during that time there will be activation of complements and these activated complements they are going to go and lyse the red blood cells which do not have daf and cd59 that is why there will be hemolysis going on little at higher higher rate during night time so whenever the patient passes the morning urine so that will be red because entire night there will be hemolysis going on and that is what is referred as nocturnal hemoglobinuria so morning urine will be red so hemoglobinuria is a sign of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria it is there in the name hemoglobinuria hemoglobinuria so there are three signs here one is patient will have jaundice anemia and hemoglobinuria especially in the morning time will clearly will indicate paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria now what are the tests that we are going to do here so there is a screening test which we do for paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria and that is called a sugar water test sugar water test or also called as sucrose hemolysis test so sucrose hemolysis test is a screening test so what we do here uh, is we create a hypotonic solution of uh, a solution in that we are going to put a blood like whole blood we are going to place there so in the hypotonic solution red blood cells will recruit complements so when the complements are recruited adhere to the red blood cells so red blood cells if they don't have daf and cd59 complements they are going to lyse them so hemolysis in hypotonic solution is a positive test so that is a screening test so whichever the test comes out positive in screening test we are going to subject them for further confirmatory test so the confirmatory test for PNH, we have two of them. One is HAMS test. 
So Ham's test basically here the red blood I mean, uh, so the sample will be placed in a test tube and the pH of this sample uh, blood sample is dropped to 6.2. So we are going to bring the pH to 6.2 which is towards acidic. So when the drop in the pH to 6.2 so during this time if the pa patient has pa uh, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria red blood cells will be lysed and that's a positive test Hampstead. Now there is one more which is uh, much more sensitive much more uh, specific for paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria test and that is flow cytometry. Using flow cytometry, so basically we use monoclonal antibodies in flow cytometry and count the number of CD59 and DAF over red blood cells. So it is considered as more specific, more sensitive than HAMS test. That is why nowadays flow cytometry has been, it is replacing HAMS test as a definitive test for diagnosis of paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. This is all about paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. I hope you understood the concept behind paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Thanks for watching.